All right. Special interview tonight with the one and only Tommy Perno, a.k.a. Tommy Cheeseballs. What's up, dude? What's going on? How much? How you been, brother? Hanging in there. So for people who don't know, Tommy was from the MTV show True Life. He was the original uh, king of the Jersey Shore. <laughs> you know? So before we, uh, before we get started, I figured... You know, since I'm talking to the king of the Jersey Shore, and I used to go down to the Jersey Shore too, we were about the same age. I'm going to get all gushed out with you. So, <laughs> Do I got, it, brother. I got my uh, gold chain, right? There you go. Yeah, you can't go wrong without You got to have the pinky ring. No doubt about it, brother. The diamond watch. Got to have the there diamond watch, right? There you go. And then last but not least, the Versace sunglasses. That you. Oh, shit. You got money like that. Mine are fucking knockoffs, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is, so my nose is crooked, so my glasses are crooked. So this is what it was, this is what it's like down in uh, the Jersey Shore. So I figured I'd get all gushed out with you. And then we'll Same talk way. about, we'll talk about MTV and the years past. No doubt, man. So let's, let's start from the beginning, man. How did you wind up on that show? How did you get, uh, spotted to do that show so i was down at uh, i was at merge uh down at the sea side and uh it was uh july 4th weekend and uh so we went to merge early to get stamped then to go to temptations to get stamped so we didn't have to wait on lines you know later on so we were at merge and one of my buddies got in a fight with his girlfriend so they were all going to temps he said let's stay at merge so we stayed and you know, it was, it was only like 1030. So there wasn't a lot of people in there and I was already three sheets to the wind. You know what I mean? So I'm on the dance floor dancing by myself. And so dude <laughs> came up to me and tapped me on his shoulder and Ali, he said, would you be interested in doing a, uh, a reality show on MTV? So I said, if we go outside and that producer's not out there, I said, you ain't coming back in the club. I can guarantee you that. Okay. So, so we went out there and uh, sure enough, the producer was out there and uh, he started asking me some questions. And, uh, you know, I was answering him and, and he said, well, he said, you're, you're, you're pretty animated and you're pretty, you're pretty alive and everything else. He said, uh, could you be that way in front of camera? So I said, hell yeah, with no fucking clothes on. <laughs> so he laughed laugh. and he said, he said, listen, he said, uh, you know, maybe we can meet up with you tomorrow and, uh, and do and tape you and ask you some questions and see how you are actually are in front of the camera. Okay. So, uh, you know, after an all nighter, uh, they, they, the next day was Sunday and, uh, you know, they showed up at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so, you know, I was, re I already had a couple in me <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it was a, it, for four hours, man, it was, it was pretty grueling, but, uh, four hours, they were asking me questions and everything, uh, you know, with the camera on and, uh, you know, I just answered everything honestly. And, uh, you know, at the end of it, they said, you know, we'll let you know. And I said, what do you mean? You let me know. I said, do I have it or do I not have it? Right. So we, we, we've, we're, we've checked out about a couple thousand people for this and this and that. So we got to make some decisions. And I said, look. I said, if you don't let nobody Tuesday, pull my name out of that because I don't do it. So yeah. they talked amongst themselves. And, uh, the producer came back to me and he said, listen, from the second. That was a wrap from there on. And, uh, you know, and it was it was, you know, the premise kind of changed because they were they were filming a girl's house, too. OK, uh, at the same time, they were going to do a girl's house and and the, and uh I guess the girls' house thing, well, maybe wasn't uh, wasn't panning out for them. It wasn't entertainment enough or whatever from what they saw. So, all right, I had to just focus on me. So, um, you know, and then uh, and then you know, you see what happened in the show, you know, and you know, my only thing was, you know, and one of the reasons why you know I, I put myself back out there eighteen years later is that, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions now. You know, you can't put anything on fucking TV that I didn't say or, and you know, you wouldn't have audio if I, if I didn't say it. If you, you wouldn't have camera, you wouldn't have video if I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I get all that stuff. But, you know, if you omit something leading up to something, you change the whole perception. Absolutely. Yes. What happened. And, and they did that numerous times. And, you know. Reality uh, shows are famous for that, dude. Yeah, oh my God, man. You know, and, and fuck that shit. There's no such thing as reality TV, man. Once the yeah. camera's on you, it ain't reality anymore. You're hundred percent right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know they omitted certain things that really, you know, it really made me look like I was a fucking punk with a big mouth and shit a right. lot of times. And the show was leading up to stuff. 
and and you know and then they didn't show what really happened afterwards you know so mm -hmm. you know I, finally I, I said you know i i, I want to set the record straight i mean you know the, the the show was called true life i have a summer share i didn't have a summer share in that house I, my parents owned the fucking beach house four blocks away i wasn't going to pay for a summer share my parents I, my parents got a house there oh i didn't okay yeah i wasn't even staying in that house i mean the whole pre everything was bullshit you know what i mean wow okay all right yeah. So, I mean, you know, they did their thing. I mean, like, you know, in the beginning of the show, they had me driving down. They, they had me getting on a parkway in my, my Cadillac. That was, actually filmed, that was actually filmed in November after that fucking summer. You Get know? out they, of here, really? Yeah, they came back. They wanted, you know, they wanted, let's, we got to do this. We got to put this in there. We got to do this. We got to do that. You know, so, you know, I mean, they have, they have thousands and thousands of hours uh, of me out from I mean, I woke up and the camera was on me. No shit. I mean, I went to sleep. The cameras were on me. I woke up. The camera's on me. And, uh, you know, it was a little crazy and, and, you know, I, I had fun doing it, but then, uh, you know, everything really changed after the show. I mean, I, I don't think anybody thought it was going to be so big and, uh, you know, it just, it changed my life and, and not really in a positive way, you yeah. know, uh, I, I was never able to just go, I was never able to go out and just be me and just be like, you know, just some dude in the bar or in the club, just, you know, getting his drink on and having a good time. It wasn't that anymore. I had to watch my ass. I, it got to a point where, you know, like four years after the show, fuck up the show, I had to hire bodyguards. I mean, oh. you know, I got, I had somebody tried to stab. I was taking a piss walking bamboo, and some dude comes up and tried to stab me from behind. Wow. You know, like, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it was like, it was, it was crazy. So I got to the point where I didn't even want to go anywhere or do anything anymore because I, I knew what it was going to, what it was going to be. You know what I mean? And, and right. So, you know, when I was, when I was all said and done, you know, I, I, there wasn't a place I could, I went to it, it, for the first 10 years after the show, not one place that I wasn't recognized, not one. And, you know, I, I was just so tired of it. I, I really was tired of it. And, you know, finally when it started dying down a little bit and everything and, and, uh, you know, MTV called me, they wanted me to do it where they now 10 years later and this and that. And, uh, I told them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> good, good. You know, they, they didn't blur up my, my fucking, my, my license plate in my car. They didn't blur up the number of my house. They showed the street sign where I lived. You know, I, I, my car was getting bashed up. My house was getting shot at. Wow. You know, yeah, I mean, like, you know, like, you know, they're, they're, that's their responsibility to, to blur that shit out. You know, sure, I, I, definitely. I, they, they, they assured me that that stuff would be air, would be blurred out. You know, one, wow. one, of my, one of my great friends, one of my best friends in the world, uh, he was on the show with me. He was a school teacher, you know. He, he was supposed to be blurred out. They blurred him out most of the time, but a couple of times they didn't. He right. almost lost the job. Uh, one of my other, one of my other best friends too was on the show. He, he's a police officer, okay. Wow. And, and and guess what? They wanted to fucking fire his ass after the show. It's like, you know, they, they you know they they still had entertainment. They didn't they didn't have to pull that kind of shit. You know, that's not an oversight. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. They're no. a huge company, and entertainment is what they do. And protecting yeah. their ass is also what they do. Absolutely, they know exactly. They know exactly what they're doing. There's no question about it. Well, how yeah. old were you when you actually were on that show? I was 27. Oh, you were a young dude. Like all you know is you're going to be on TV. You're going to get paid, and yeah. that's all you care about. Yeah, right, right. You don't yeah, know the yeah. repercussions. Yeah. No, I, I never, I never, you know, I, I just never thought it would be. It, it would, it would turn out like that. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And, and you know, and then. <laughs> And then the Jersey Shore show comes out, right? And, and you know, I'm asked this constantly, you know, and, and I haven't met any of them or anything. And, you know, I, I don't hate on them, I, I, you know, uh, for being successful. You know, they had an opportunity and they ran with it. And and right. and that's great for all of them. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my point is this. Without my show, they don't have that opportunity, period. You know, nobody gave a shit about the Jersey Shore before my show, except people who came here regularly. You're right. You're hundred percent right. Now, not not nationwide, worldwide. Did they even try to contact you to be on that? No, uh, no not at all. Nothing. No, no. Well, they, they, they did speak to me about it and they said that I was too old, you know, that they, they wanted to go with, uh, I, I believe it was either 23 or 24 was going to be the max age that they right. were gonna, and everything else. And I'll tell you, I, I mean, that, that was, I felt to me another real big slight, you know, that, that was fucked up on their part. Like, yo, I look what I just did. I just, I just fucking, I just gave you the number, your number one reality show that you've ever had. Right. And, and you're going to go and cut me out of the fucking loop. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. you, know, yeah. who does? you know what I mean? But that's what they did, you know? You know, so, you, you and I are from, are from the same background. You know, we're both blue-collar guys. 
Um, uh, I moved to Bloomfield, New Jersey about 11 years ago. My wife grew up here. I grew up on Staten Island. I, grew, I lived in Brooklyn before that. And, you know, you and I shake hands. We're going to agree to something. And that's it. It's not like that with big business, man. It's, it's just not like that. It's, it's unfortunate, cool. but it's, it's, I was an electrician for 10 years. Now I'm, I work in the sewer. If I go to your house and you need electrical work done, I don't want a deposit. I'll be here. Tell me the time. I'm going to do the work. I shake your hand and that's it. Yeah. It's, it's not, you know, they're just, they're just the biggest gangsters in the country. They really are. You, know, you ain't kidding. You ain't kidding. It's, it's really dog eat dog with them and then they could give two shits, you know. Uh, they, they don't care how they exploit people or, you know, what it does to their lives as long as their bottom line grows and their their pockets grow. They're OK with that, you know. But, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say you're not the only one because they, they were I mean, that show ran from like 98 to like 2000, what, 13 or something like that? 2000. Uh, they, they, it was it was right after the 10 year anniversary show. Uh, well, the, after 10 years, they, they started playing it again. I actually had a lawyer contact them and tell them that if they aired it anymore, that we were going to come after them. Oh, all right. Good. You good. know, for not blurring out everything and, uh, uh, you know, and, you know, the, all they wanted to do is keep, keep making money off me, keep making money off me, keep making money off me. And, and right. here I am fucking not even able to go out because I got people taking shots at me all over the place. Right, know? right. Now, where did you grow up? You said you had a house down uh, the Jersey Shore. Did you grow up down there? No, I grew up in Elmwood Park right next to Patterson. Oh, okay. I'm not too far from you. All right. No, all right. No, all you're, right. Uh, yeah. Another guy that uh, was on that show, uh, he actually passed passed away. Charlie uh, Calco, I think his name was. He did the, uh, he was we're getting what? married. He was, yeah. in, not, not, you're right. And uh, I knew him. We, uh, we didn't go to high school together. We knew each other from high school, you know, different high schools, but we knew each other. And it was pretty much the same kind of thing. They made him look like a typical bozo yeah. from Staten Island, that kind of thing, you know. And um, like I said, you can't, you, you know, I, I understand they got to do what they got to do to make them tell the show, but you know, you're changing people's lives, you know. It's it's different, you know. It, it's 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 like I said, they're the biggest gangsters in the world. They really are. There's 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 no value. There's no morals. It's just fucking shit, you know. But yeah. uh, the good thing is nobody watches fucking TV anymore, so they got to be losing their yeah. shirt. You know? That's it. Without a battle, bro. <laughs> yeah, you ain't kidding. I mean, all I do is watch YouTube, you know, and Amazon Prime and shit. So did yes. you get, after that show, did you get any other offers, any other opportunities? Yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, I, I, almost immediately afterwards, I got called by uh, uh, UTA, United Talent Agency, out in California. Okay. Uh, at the time, I don't know if they still are, but they were the biggest, they were the biggest talent agency out there. Uh, they flew me out there. Uh, you know, they, they all expenses paid. They put me up in a hotel. Uh, I went and met with with the uh, one of the agents, um, and you know, I basically, he, I mean, he he was actually the same age as I was, which was nah. which was shocking to me, you know. And and he said, look, he said, I'm just going to be plain and simple with you. He said, I'm I'm going to make you an offer. You're either going to fucking take it or not. I said, okay. So he said, look, he said, I will put you up out here for one year. And in a gorgeous home, all expenses paid, a car, everything else. But you're going to be going to acting classes. You're going to take dialect classes. Dialect uh, classes. That, and that, well, that's see, that's exactly what I said. I said dialect classes, and he said, "Yeah." He said, he "said you're only you're one dimensional right now." And I said, "But that's what people want to hear. Apparently, yeah. they, they like that, you know." And and he said, "He said, listen, I he goes, I don't give a shit. But you got to put money in my pocket for me to put it in your pocket." Uh, I he said. Said, so, he said, so if you're one dimension, he said, you're limiting earning potential. He said, so I don't want you, uh, you know, one dimensional. And I okay. said, look, man, I am not an actor. I said, I, I got, I was a guy who just got fucking drunk and had a good time down at the fucking shore. Like everybody else did. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm not a fucking actor. Yeah. You know, I don't have fucking training or anything in that shit. And nor do I want to fucking take classes for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he basically, he said, look, I, I'm going to give you seven days to think about it and uh, and get back to me. And so, you know, I, I, I told him no. You know, I, I didn't want him, I didn't want him to move out there in the first place. And, you know, I don't know, at the time it just, it, it didn't seem right. It didn't feel right, you know. I mean, I had a great time out there. It was an in-style magazine party, you know. Yeah. Uh, they, you know, they brought me to a lot of cool things, but, you know, it, it wasn't at the time, I don't know, it just, it, 
it wasn't I, I had a, I already had a taste of fame and I didn't like it. I, I didn't I didn't want it. Anymore, yeah, you know? I hear you. You know, <laughs> it, it's it's one dimensional. You're one dimensional. That's unbelievable. Oh, let me think off the top of my head. Well, other Italian guys are one dimensional that never made it in Hollywood. Oh, I don't know. Joe Pesci, James Gandolfini, um, uh, De Niro, uh, you know, you know, uh, Paul Savino. Oh, yeah. Those guys can't act for shit. You know, no. Marissa Torme. You want me to keep going? You know, give me a fucking break. It's just. No doubt, OK, so you come back home and then what happens from there? Oh, you know, I kind of just wanted to to go into obscurity. You know what I mean? I mean, I just I wanted everything to die down and. Uh, you know, it, it, it finally started to, but I, I noticed the more the more I wasn't out there, the quicker things were dying down, you know? Okay. And, you know, so, and I stayed off, I stayed off, uh, you know, the internet and shit. Um, and, you know, back then, social media was MySpace. That was it. I don't even think yes. Facebook. Yeah, I remember around. that. Yeah. So, you know, and I never got into that social media shit. So, you know, it finally started dying down and, and I was happy about it and, and, you know, I mean, every now and then I'd still get approached and the people who knew me would say, you know, why don't you set the record straight and shit? You know, I said, I, I just want this to go away. I, I want to be able to just go into a bar and get fucked up without everybody fucking staring at me and bothering me. I want to be able to go out to eat with my fucking family and not right. have people keep coming up. I mean, the people don't even respect you when it, when it comes to that. Right. I, I, two weeks ago, I'm out, to, I'm out to dinner with my daughter for six and. You know. And, and I'm, I'm just asking, listen, I'll, I'll answer all your questions, you know, uh, and take pictures of you when I'm done eating. But please let me finish my fucking dinner with my daughter. Right. Nobody, nobody cares. I, I mean, I get it. I'm not I'm not mad at them, but it, it's frustrating to me. You know, my yeah. daughter thinks it's amazing and, and cool. You know, she's sick. She thinks, oh, it's great. It's great. My daddy, he's daddy. Cheese. Of course. Yeah. You know? But right. I, you know, so I, I and I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't even really want to do this now and, and, and put myself back out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just figured, you know what, at some point in time, the record, uh, I, sh I should get my fucking point across. MTV told the story from their point of view. And mm -hmm. I should tell the real fucking point of view how it really went down. Yeah. So how are you doing that? How are you telling your point of view? What, uh, what uh, platforms are you using? I'm doing it through uh, podcasts and shit. Um, okay. TikTok, Instagram, gotcha. everything else. I, uh, uh, what, how many weeks ago? I, a couple weeks ago, I did an interview with Barstool Sports. And Dave Portnoy offered me a job right on the spot. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. So I want to hear back from him. Uh, you know, I don't like to chase people, but at the same time, you know, I'm getting a little anxious. I want to do some. I got a, I got some ideas. I'm going to be doing uh, a podcast. I'm going to rank all the fucking cheese bowls in Seaside. Because back in the day, there was only one place that sold them. Now, like, everybody sells them, you know? Yeah, so I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going to taste them, rank them, and everything else. That, that's to pretty cool. Them. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I, yeah tell us how you got that nickname. Oh, uh, please. I wish I well. I mean, I know yeah. how it fucking out, but I gotta tell you, man, they could. I would have rather them call me asshole, scumbag, fuck face, whatever. <laughs> There's no good way to make cheese balls sound fucking good, you know. No, it is definitely not. <laughs> it's really the beginning of the show, you know. We're 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 fucking smash coming out of the club, and you know we should, we always just go to Steaks Unlimited afterwards, you know. And mm. I'm in the fucking truck, and I'm like, yeah, cheese balls, cheese balls, going to get cheese balls and steak sandwiches, I kept saying so. Right, right, right. And then, and then at the stand, well, the one night, you know, somebody fucking stole my cheese balls, and I'm going nuts. Who stole my fucking cheese balls? So, you know, some fucking genius came up with Tommy Cheese Balls as a name, and and I swear I'd like to meet that dude. I'll tell you what. But, <laughs> you know, it's all good. You know, at first, I'm like, of all the fucking things they couldn't come up with, that's what they fucking came up with, you yeah, know? right, right, right. And I'm right. all right with it now, you know what I mean? But yeah. You know, the guy, at, the guy in Boston's, uh he I, I saw the clip where he made you the offer and whatnot and that's great you know but he kind of he said it in a way that that was offensive but i got a little offended if you will because he said uh he goes i know you're still laying brick right so you're a mason right yeah i am a carpenter i do both i'm a two-trick pony action yeah so I, I was an electrician for a long time i still do it on the side and it was almost like it's almost like i know you're doing that kind of like menial job, but I'm right. want to offer you a real job kind of deal. I mean, he might have not, uh, he might have not really meant it like that, but that's how it kind of came out. And I'm watching, I'm going, this guy couldn't, he wouldn't know how to use a screwdriver, you know? <laughs> I mean, I mean fucking, blue collar guys get no, no respect. It's unbelievable. They get no respect. There's this, uh, 
there's this YouTuber called Kevin Samuels. And I don't know if you ever saw this guy, but basically what he does is he's a life coach and he teaches girls about how important men are and so on and so forth. And he does this thing and he goes, he goes, if I was Thanos and I snapped my fingers and there were no uh, men in the world, um, you know, how would you survive? He does this thing. Well, you know, if I was Thanos and I snapped my fingers and there was like a zombie apocalypse, you know, and we had a, we, you and I and Barstool, whoever he was, had to belong to a group of people. Who would they pick first? The mason, oh, yeah. the electrician, or the fucking <laughs> or, the, <laughs> or the podcaster? You and I would be fine, we, you know, and they would wind up feeding him to the zombies. <laughs> hey, you know what? They give us a little more time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Strong sir, rock, cup of fat old complete, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's, un- it's unbelievable. It really is. Meanwhile, you know. Yeah, we built and, America, but we get no respect. No, it's uh, it's unreal. It's uh, it's unreal. You know, people want they want to be at the top of the food chain, but nobody wants to be uh, at the bottom building stuff. You know, yeah, they, they, they don't want to even work. They don't know. You know, I I, start, I people make comments all the time. Oh, he's a fucking laborer. He's a laborer. Yeah, I started out as a laborer, and then I went to the carpenters union. I I, I learned how to become a full master mason, and I worked my way all the way to a general foreman. So, yeah. but yeah, I started at the bottom, and I'm not ashamed of that at all. Because you know what? I, I, well, nothing was given to me. I people, fucking asshole. First, people don't realize how difficult the trade is. People don't realize, people don't realize how much money is in the trade. You can oh, make a, a nice, nice, nice living. I mean, and and they just don't respect it. They hear, you know, they hear manual labor. They hear a trade, and it's just like, ah, uh, you know, they, you know. But you say accountant, and it's like, wow, and it's like, well, I make twice as much as my accountant. Yeah. 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 absolutely and, you know they think we're all stupid and shit and then little do they know i got a fucking man yeah it's it's unbelievable somebody's got to pay for these versace glasses you know give me a break <laughs> i gotta find someone to pay for them for me bro <laughs> yeah i'm telling you all right so um so after all those years you uh you know you stayed in your trade but even in your trade even working was it difficult with the guys no, you know, you know, the guys I worked with, I was I was friends with all of them, you know, and, okay. and knew them all for years. It was really it was a big family, basically. Oh, all right, and, good. Uh, I mean, you know, you know, my boy, my boys always broke my balls back and forth and shit, you know. But it was all it was all in good taste and everything. Um, we did run into some problems. We were doing additions on high schools. Um, mm. The company I was working for was the, one of the biggest masonry outfits in, in North Jersey, and we were doing additions on tons of schools. And I remember we were at Union High School, and uh, one of, the, one of the girls in one of the classrooms, you know, saw me through the window and recognized me and it caused problems. They, they, all, they were basically, it, it, it seemed like they were going to try and get me not, not to be back on the job because it was disrupting mm. the classrooms. And yeah, you know, my, my defense was then, you know, then, then you pay my fucking bills. You know, you, how are you going to do that? Is, is this my fault? You know, I'm, I'm here to work right. you know, I'm here for anything else, you know, and, and, you know, I, I they let me stay on the job and everything, but so things like that would happen, um, you know, but my, my boss was a unbelievable man. He, I, I consider him family, Good. Um, you know, to this day. So, you know, he backed me up always, um, you know, throughout the whole thing. And, and, and you know what? God bless my parents. You know, my, my parents were around at the time and, you know, you know, my father was an old Italian man. You know, I, I remember I said, oh, shit, when I fought. Until I see my fucking pop, he's gonna fucking slap the shit out of me. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, when I went home that night, no kidding there, uh, and my mother was still up, and uh, they they bought a couple fucking presents for me and shit, whatever. And I, I came home and, and I said, "What are you guys doing up?" It's like fucking three thirty four in the morning. And my father goes, "Listen," he goes, "You know, he goes first of all, you need to you, you should not drink so much." He goes, "Because you turn into a fucking idiot." He says, right. "But." He goes, but I'll tell you this. He said, you know, how many people get that kind of opportunity? And he said, you know what? No matter what, he said, I'm really proud of you. And, and my mother said the same thing. And it, and uh, you know, they backed me up no matter what. And 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 I, I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't be anything if if, if they weren't the people that raised me. And, and that's great, man. Um, great yeah, you know, uh, again, family, family values. That's another thing that people don't appreciate anymore. But it goes a long way. It makes you who you right. are. And you can Look see out. it. You could see you could see how uh, communities fall apart. You could see how families fall apart if you just don't have those values growing up. You, you just um, even you know 
what part of Italy were your was your family from? Naples. Oh, okay. My father's side was Sicilian. My mother's side was Galabrese. Oh uh, well. Yeah. Some but, of the in the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, those old school values uh go a long way. It's unfortunate that they don't carry on too often anymore. You know, it's uh it's something that's almost a dying, dying breed. It's unfortunate. Sure. But it's, yeah, that's, it's, why, that's why the families the families in this country have been broken down, man. Yeah. And, without a doubt because of that. So it's traditional morals and values uh, and family, you know what, that shit all of a sudden didn't matter anymore. Now look look where the fucking, look where, every, where, look where the country is going. I mean, it's it's a mess. 50% you know? divorce rate and 80% from that divorce rate is filed by the women. Is that right? That's right. Okay, 80%, wow. 80% <laughs> is filed by the women. And once you get to uh, once you get to a household that makes two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or more, the divorce rate drops to twenty percent. <laughs> I swear to God, I, know. I swear to God. I look gotta remember up. that shit. That's classic, man. You That's a God's God. honest truth. <laughs> That's a God's honest truth, man. That's great, man. So, how about yourself? Are you married? You have. You said you had a daughter. You have any other kids? So I was. So, I, so that's that's where things really get fucked up. So, um, you know, and I I, I met a woman, uh, you know, uh, maybe I think it was like uh, thirteen years after the no, it was ten years after the show. I met her, started dating. We got serious, uh, and uh, we were at San, Sandy. It happened, and we both, you know, uh, she lost her house. I was living in my parents' beach house. I was working down here building houses. Mm. And so that house was gone. So uh, we decided to take a shot. She had she had two daughters, and so I was petrified to move in with 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 her and two kids. And I live with three females, and you know what I'm saying, right? Uh, so, but but we did that, and and we made a go of it, and uh, we wound up getting married. Uh, we had a baby, okay. and uh, three years to the day after our. I missed that part. Say that again. Three years what? Three years after my daughter was born to the day my wife passed away. My oh daughter. my god wow really sorry to hear that man yeah wow so, uh, what did she uh what did she pass from um she shot herself oh my god dude really really sorry yeah, well, yeah we could we could move on we'll move on to the next stuff uh, how old is your daughter now she's six all right good so so and uh you have her doing any sports or anything like that you keep her active not yet. I mean, you know, we, 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 we spar a lot, you know, she, she's, 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 she's a dirty little shin kicker though. I can tell you that much. <laughs> but uh, she, she wants to, she wants to do soccer. She wants to play softball. Uh, I was about to say, yeah, with soccer being Italian and then the Italians in the soccer, you know, uh, craze, I figured you'd have it playing soccer. Yeah, no, she, she's definitely, she's going to be playing next year. You know, it's been, it's been so hard, you know, I don't have any support left, you know, uh, my family's all gone and everything. So, I mean, I'm, I'm dad 24 seven. I got to yeah. work, cook, clean, do the fucking laundry, um, take care of her for, take her to school, give her a bath, you know, get her clothes ready. I, 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 you know, it's, 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 I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy. You know, it's, it's rough. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm spread too thin all the time, you know, but you know, what am I going to do? You know, I'll be like other people when I point her off on somebody else or something. No fucking way. I'm her fucking father, and That's I'm a it. fucking and I'm gonna raise that fucking girl to the best of my ability. You know, yeah. I'm learning shit every day. You know, before before my wife passed away, mm -hmm. all I did was work 14, 16 hours a day. I, I wasn't home changing diapers or being. Yeah. You know, and I and I used to talk, but I'm a great father. I wasn't a father. I was a provider. You right. know what I mean? Right. And, yeah. And, and all of a sudden, so so then after that, you know, when 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 my wife passed, I had to learn how to be everything. I had to be yeah. mom, dad, and do everything. You know, I, I didn't do laundry. You know, I, I didn't do the cooking. The meal was ready for me when I got home. Yeah. You know, I, sure. So, I mean, to try and to try and get everything done and, and, and keep things rolling is 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 an, is every day is a huge challenge for me. Yeah. You don't you don't you don't hear anything. There's no support groups for uh, single fathers. No, you, you don't. There, there, there's no. really there's really not, man. And no, no. There's not yeah. many of us. Not, there's yeah. not many of us. You know? Yeah, there's no support for groups for single fathers. There's no uh, Oprah Winfrey's. Nobody's throwing shows or nothing like that. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, I'll tell you this much, and I can guarantee this: your daughter is going to appreciate everything, and she's going to understand what a wonderful human being you are. Uh, that's for sure. That goes without saying. That's all that matters to me. I don't and I, and I hope, and I'm sure she will marry a man just as good as you. 
Oh, well, I don't know about that now. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get married when you're in the convent. I'm just saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure she'll be fine. I got, I got a baseball bat for each of his legs. You know what I mean? That's why she's going to marry a good dude. Because when, right, right. yeah, yeah. when you see that bum coming through the door, yeah. his ass is going to be out of the door before he can say blueberry pancakes. That's right. Or he, or he's never leaving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just disappears, you know? That's right. Like that line, like that line from, uh, from what was it? Uh, Bronx Tale. Now you just can't leave. <laughs> can't leave. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Listen, Tommy, I'm, I'm going to let you go. I really appreciate you doing the interview, you know? Um, We'll definitely uh, do another one. We'll get together and we'll do another one again. Where can people reach you? Where can people find you? Uh, uh, do you want to plug anything? Yeah, I'm on. I'm on Instagram. I'm on. Uh, what else? Facebook. Facebook. I'm Instagram. on TikTok. Um, I have. A, I have got a site for merchandise, which is uh, TommyCheeseBalls.net. TommyCheeseBalls.net. So people go on and, and buy some of my gear. I would help support. TommyCheeseBalls.net. I'm going to make sure that is it. that's in the comment section so everybody could just click it and go. Oh, I appreciate you, John. Of course. No problem, man. I appreciate you doing this interview, dude. And listen, God bless and have a, have a great rest of your night, all right? Thanks. You too, man. Stay in touch, bro. You got it.